Greetings, I'm here with Janine, a beautiful empress, queen, poet, singer, songwriter, producer, social activist, philosopher, African. <laughs> Welcome to Reggae Sundance Festival. How do you like the show? How do you like the vibe? The vibe is cool. The show was really cool. It was really cool. I know a lot of people in Holland are not familiar. And so to see them warming and little by little just coming closer to the stage and listening, you know, that was a real treat for me. And to be here with Dean Fraser and his band, that was a real honor. So it's been great. It was nice having you. But you were raised in Trelawney, Falmouth. Falmouth, yeah. And you were, um, your father was a pastor. Mm -hmm. So how was that coming up, Trelawney, father a pastor, and then now bringing a positive, strong message? Well, I think it's quite a natural transition. I, I have no idea why you would be confused about that. <laughs> I mean, my father was a revolutionary yeah. from them time there. And okay. if you know anything about the Baptist church in Jamaica, it really is a, the foundation of that church is, 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 you know, strengthening the black people who were there, strengthening the Africans who were there. Um, and it has a rich tradition of music and, and Afrocentricity and that's the tradition my father grew up in. He was a countryman, so he's from Westmoreland and his father was instrumental in the church there as well and so um, country people in Jamaica when you know the relationship they have they have with their pastor is such that the pastor is somebody who they go to when there are problems in the family or who they lean on and who they they support and you know who they look up to um when i moved from falmouth to kingston now i met the city pastors and city pastors are a different breed you know what i mean they are the ones who drive the big cars and the fancy suits and they're all about you know different kind of current so growing up with that, those traditional values, when I came, it stood out to me. It stood out to me right away. And then I became more, you know, more aware of even the political system in which I existed. Because that was the time when I was growing up. And I got exposed to more children my age. Because in Falmouth, it's, a, it's one of the first cities. So there are a lot of old people there. So it was a lot of the traditional values. And when I went to primary school there, the children were socialized different. Their values were different. It was more of a materialistic culture. The whole issue of complexion and those kinds of things is when I came to the city that I really started to see some of those things manifest. And uh, my father was no, no longer pastor of a church. He was chaplain of um, a boys' school. And so we lived on the compound of the boys' school. So I didn't have neighbors and wholly a big community. I had just my family. And so a lot of the experiences I went through, I ended up having to kind of deal with them in my head. And so I ended up writing a great deal. And then I had a trauma in my family. My brother died very early. And it was, it was a lot to go through, you know, and a lot to come to grips with in a very short space of time as a very young person. And so it kind of started me on the, on the trend of introspection and kind of looking within myself and looking at myself outside of myself. <laughs> And that, that, that influenced the way that I wrote. And it influenced the way that I was. And that influenced your strong message that you bring, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. So when did you get into the music business? When music do you think business, uh, probably, what year is this? 2013? Maybe in 2000, 2005, maybe? Yeah. Um, I, I was in corporate Jamaica. I went through whole university and all of that. And I never had aspirations of being an artist in terms of an artist like a singer or whatever it was just something I always could do I could always sing I could always write and I would always perform now and then separate and apart from you know choirs and performing in a group like performing my own works started as spoken word and poetry and then when I got introduced to instrumental dub you know and roots music that music was like medicine and it really drew it out of me, you know. So I started you now to put my word sound onto this music. And I, I, was, I had a lot of spaces to do that. I have a virgin, Gabri Selassie, who introduced me to Rory, who plays instrumental dub up by his house. I mean, if it wasn't for ones like that, I probably wouldn't have had as much 
time with the music to really sit and absorb it and once I started to listen to it the words just started to flow out of me and then I put the two together and that's how the whole jazz and dub vibe was born because it was the same time that I started to become exposed to to like contemporary jazz not even contemporary like traditional jazz like Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald Sarah Vaughan Dinah Washington um, these ladies were singing from the same place that the gospel music that I grew up you know listening to was coming from and I could relate to that and they were singing but they were not trapped inside of the music that they were singing they found their own voice and that inspired me to find my own voice and just time just over time I reached the point where I was like I can I, I can share this and once I started to share it it was it was just it was just that from there people started to hear it and it they just pulled me it just pulled me like doors just began to open and the people that I the connections that I got to make it, I mean it happened so naturally you would never think because you hear how hard it is to enter the industry and it's so hard for a woman and I mean I hear that too but I that has not been my experience and I think that is because it's what I'm supposed to be doing it's your calling yeah. it's your I, calling I, I clearly truly believe that I truly believe that because I have done other things and I have worked hard and I am not working hard now. I am not. I am working wisely. And the work that I am doing now is really on myself as an individual. And the more I try and do that and just stay grateful and stay humble and just make sure I take care of my temple and take care of my mind space and show love to the people them even when they're not showing love to I, you know, that is the real work of life. The music is easy. A very important message for everyone, work yeah, on self. Yes, I, that is the message. If you listen to the album, that is what rings through. To just tap into that, to listen to your inner voice, to know what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. That is the work. And once you know what it sounds like, then you can really tune in and really just kind of surrender. Mm -hmm. you know? Like you said before, you started working with Rory Stone. Yes. Yeah, Stone, Stone, Stone Love. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when did that happen? When... Uh, or how did it I'm happen? I'm so not good with dates, but that happened. <laughs> that happened a few years ago, yeah. um, and as I said, it happened through an introduction through through my virgin who plays um, for Rockers International Sound, and he he introduced us because Rory wanted a female vocalist for a rhythm that he had. Um, and that's the rhythm that Mr. Wright is on. So that's the first song I did with him, and just that whole experience of meeting him and going in and you don't really know what to expect because this is Rory Stone Love and you hear all sorts of terrible things about him <laughs> from back in the day and then when I went to his house I went by myself and I went with all the confidence I could muster and I sit at, sat and, I, and he was the humblest most gracious host and just the experience in the studio I know he knows quite a bit about the kind of music that I love because he, he he's a part of that history but when I started to put my words on, he really was feeling the words I was saying. And he was at that transitional point in his life too. It's like I met him at the right time. You know, if I had met him another time, maybe it would never have manifested. But I met him at a time when he really wanted to, you know, do that kind of journey within himself as well. And so it affected even how he would eat and how he would exercise and take care of himself. And so we built a relationship. We built a relationship that no he's like my brother he's my big brother he's somebody who you know whatever they say this is somebody who i know you know has my back mm -hmm. and it's not a money thing and it's not a control thing and it's not a david kind of thing like you hear them talk about with other people it's a re you know it's another thing that just affirms to me that yeah this is your calling and you're providing all the people that you need to do this work because trust me rory goes beyond the call of duty you know what i mean him really is my family and so the music he gave me the space to express everything that I wanted. So he didn't confine me to what was a commercially viable kind of sound. He just let me be. You know what I mean? And he started to learn the music. He started to, to kind of learn the kind of music that I liked. The tempo I liked. The keys that I liked. And every time he would produce something and bring it to me, you know, I felt it. I could feel it. And I mean, over the years... I mean, right now, anything we really produce, I can use because he, we're lucky in that way, you know. We're you guys are a perfect combination. The sound is just wicked. Yeah. And then your new album, new name. new name. Explain something about that. Uh, new name. I can tell you about that song. That song, new name, is one of the last songs that were written toward that album. When that song was written, the song, the album didn't even have a name. But just off of my own spiritual journey and my coming to understand the significance of Haile Selassie, not just as a physical human being or as a political figure, 
or as a historical figure, but just understanding him in his fullness, you know, and wanting to and learning about the words and the place that he has, you know, in, in, in the prophecy, in everything. Just that journey just made, just inspired that song out of me. It really did. And then now, when I, when I look back at it, I can say it's really, it is the most significant song that I have done to date. And so at that time, I decided, all right, once that song came out, that song was written in such a short space of time, I can hardly take credit for it. It was really a divine inspiration. But once it forward, I was like, yeah, this new name is the album. That is what it has to name. That is the message. Is it that? Artwork can build now. We know what we're doing. <laughs> well, are you working on other projects at the moment? Yes, man. Nothing's working on now. Nothing's in the music and in the community. Um, w w there's another album pending that I had actually started before I started working with Rory, um, with Harmony House. Yeah. And um, that album, hopefully, we can work on releasing for next year. We want to do a dub version of the new name album and release it on vinyl. We also have singles that um, are just released and, and, you know, in the works as well. And there's just, it's just more music. There's just always the potential to create. And when you're around ones like, like Uncle China and, and, you know, those ones who are always making music, there's always inspiration to write. So I'm always writing. So there's always the potential to create. And as complement to the music is the work we're doing in the communities um, toward education and arts education and culture and, um, and things like farming, food security and just promoting food security and reminding people that they need to eat what they grow. You know what I mean? Instead of being against anything, it's better to be for something. So you don't want to eat that food and you don't think it's, well, go plant your own. And there is space, and even if it's capture, you have to capture land. Make sure, say, you have access to food so that nobody can use that to, you know, to put power, to exert power on you. Janine, thank you for the, the vibe, your passion. I love it. My favorite song on the album is uh, Gratitude. I really love it. It's my, I listen to that song the most, too. Same it's like a mantra. I love it. Like, okay, I'm ready now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, well, hope to see you soon and looking forward to your new project. This was Leila and Janine. Rastafari. World of Reggae. Bless up. Rastafari.